Hey, Jen Rev, just wanted to come to you today with our new series that we're going to start called Not So Famous. And so this series is going to focus on some of the people that are not as famous in the Bible, the people that you may not recognize or know. These people are going to be people not like King David. They're not going to be like Daniel, Paul, or Noah. But God used their lives in a significant way. I want to take a minute to... Uh, talk about surprise birthdays. Surprises can be really fun and surprise parties are supposed to be what they call a surprise. Uh, that person being honored has no idea what's going on and they end up being surprised usually for their birthday. Um, but we can also be surprised when something happens that we don't expect or by someone we don't expect. This gets, this gets played out in movies and books where the protagonist or hero ends up being someone we would not have, we would not have expected. On a simple level, we would never expect a rat to be a chef. But that's exactly what Pixar did, and they pulled off a movie called Ratatouille. And a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, your parents <clears throat> were surprised to find out that Luke Skywalker's father was none other than Darth Vader. I kind of see the resemblance there. But he still had some good left in him. And in Willy Wonka and the Cho Chocolate Factory, none of the rich kids got it. None of the rich kids got to inherit the Chocolate Factory. Instead, it was a poor, humble boy named Charlie. And even animated movies, all about heroes, the most unlikely of the family ends up being the one with the craziest powers of all. And yes, of course, I'm talking about Jack Jack Parr of The Incredibles. Now watch. So in the same way, when we think about Jesus, we expect people who go to church to have faith or trust in Jesus. But we don't expect that of people who don't go to church. In a similar way, during Jesus' lifetime, we expect Jews <clears throat> and those who already worshipped God to trust in Jesus, but not the Romans. Romans had a variety of gods and goddesses that they worshipped. And yet, in today's lesson, a doctor named Luke records for us a true story about a Roman and not just any Roman, but a Roman of some official in the army or government. And yet he trusted Jesus in an extraordinary way. Let's dig in to see what Luke wrote for us. Let's see what he wrote in Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. And it says this, and I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. It says, when Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. And at, the, at that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him about uh, to come heal and save his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does. They said, for he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them, but just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this. Because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if, my slave, if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. 
Now this story is surprising because it is the Roman who trusts that Jesus can heal his servant. It is the Roman that trusts that Jesus can heal his servant, not one of the Jews. And because he trusts Jesus, the servant is healed all because of his master's faith. This story can be so familiar and so simple that we miss how it connects with our world today. So I want you to pay quick attention to this. It's not just the insiders who can see what Jesus can do. And even unlikely people trust Jesus. I'll say that again. It's not just the insiders who can see what people can, what Jesus can do. And even unlikely people trust Jesus. And when Dr. Luke records what all happened here, he is showing us a glimpse of the truth that Jesus came for all people. And all people have the potential to see what Jesus can do. But not only that, but some of the people, like this Roman official, trust in Jesus. In our world today, that means we need to expect the people around us who may have never been to church or talked with us about faith, that they might actually know something about Jesus. And I don't just mean Christmas. Some students have grown up in families with other Christians in their homes or their extended family. Just because they don't follow Jesus doesn't mean they haven't heard about him or haven't seen how his followers act up close. In this digital age where we have Siri and we have Alexa or any other digital assistant, they can help us find what we need to know, getting information about Jesus and all of that. In a digital age where we can ask Siri and Alexa or any digital assistant to help you find out what you want to know, getting information about Jesus is easy, even if you don't have a Bible. Now, I want to say this, that keep in mind that they know what they know or have found out may not be accurate it might not and not it might not be complete or it may be totally wrong but there is a chance that they have heard of Jesus or they know about Jesus's followers and they have seen how Jesus's followers act in, up close but then there's the next level of people people who seem to be the outside to be on the outside and trust Jesus You may be shocked at your neighborhood or your school about how many people actually pray. It might be a surprise that you learn who has been reading through the Bible through an app or online from Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John's documents to learn more about Jesus. And it might really surprise you not only Have they been learning about him, but also who believes and trusts that he can do and still do what they read? So many times we don't have the faith to understand that Jesus still is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He can still do anything that we read in this Bible. He can still do it today. And sometimes that's even rare in the church. We see sometimes that that Churches don't believe that. But since we're talking like this and we're telling it like it is, there may be someone here today who fits this description. You're not your typical church kid, whatever that may be, but you do know that you want to know more about Jesus and hope that he can really do what you have heard that he does in the books. So, so, What if we approached others around us as potential believers instead of bullies or skeptics? What if we came up to our friend and said, hey, do you you know Jesus like I know Jesus? Instead of 
being scared of them and thinking, oh, they're going to judge me for my faith. Maybe they know a little bit more about Jesus than you're actually letting them believe. Maybe they're, uh, maybe they are a Christian. Maybe they have a, have had a relationship with Jesus, but they've fallen away. It's our job as Christians who walk daily with Christ to lead the sheep, to lead those people that we know that are not walking with Christ, to lead them back to Christ. What if you decided to talk about your weekend and actually include the part about church? Some of us are talking about our weekend and we don't include what happened at church this weekend. What if next time someone's having a bad day or you hear about a hard time in their life and you offer to pray for them? Now, I want to compliment uh, my sister on this. I was over at their house the other day and Tiffany was dealing with the situation and she was on the phone with somebody who had experienced something similar to her. And she offered to pray for her. Tiffany offered to pray for this woman. And I feel that Tiffany is going to be led into this area of ministry because she has that connection with people and understands how they feel and can minister to them and let them know how God can restore their life. So kudos to Tiffany for doing that. I'm proud of her. I know that that was hard. I know that she stepped out a little bit on that. But kudos to her. That I'm proud of her. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for stepping out like that. Imagine how different your school would look or your neighborhood, or your family. If you were to open up the possibility that people you've never considered talking with about Jesus may already know him and possibly even trust him. What if people you would what if the people you would most nervous you were most nervous around what if talking to them about Jesus was the very thing that they would be most excited about. If you would invite them to church and they would learn about him together. This might sound crazy, but we're going to dig into it a little bit more during this series as well and in our small group questions. But as we as we finish this series or this lesson, I want you to think about this question. Who might I be surprised to know has faith in Jesus? Who might I know <clears throat> that would surprise me to have faith in Jesus. Now, Jesus was surprised at the Roman um, officials' faith. It was so impressive that he actually turned to the crowd and explained that he has never seen faith like this before. I want you to know that God is who he says he is and can still do the things that he says he can in this book. Please don't limit him to just what he can do in the right now. Don't, don't make this a microwave gospel. Don't, don't do any of that. Because God is still a God of healing. He is still a God of faith and favor. And all we do in this is we trust in him. We put our faith in him. And we continue day to day following after him and making our life more like Christ. And we'll see a move of God happen in our, in our land and in our time. I know it's been hard in these last few months, and I know that we're kind of coming out of it uh, with school starting back up. I praise God, that's awesome. I'm so excited for that. Uh, and youth will start back up when school starts back up on August 19th. will be our first meeting together again. So I hope to see you guys then. But understand this, that we still serve the same God that's in this Bible. We still follow that same God. And... Like this Roman soldier, we have to understand that we have to have that kind of faith to see miracles like that. That even if God says it's going to happen, I'm going to trust him. And if I don't see it in my timing, then I'm going to trust his timing. So understand this, guys. God's timing is not like a microwave. It doesn't happen instantaneous. It happens in his own time. A second to God is like a second to us, and a, millis and a million seconds to us is like one second to God. Okay? Time is irrelevant to God because God is in control of everything. So if it doesn't happen in your time, understand that it happens in God's time. And I know that that's hard to grasp sometimes, and you sit there and go, well, I prayed for it and I did this and I believed in faith. 
It's not time yet. You're not ready yet. You're still being molded on that wheel, on that potter's wheel. You're still being worked. There's something in your life that still needs to be challenged. Be patient, trust God, and trust in his timing. Okay? So, with that being said, let's go over some of our small group questions. And then we're going to pray and I'm going to dismiss you, okay? So let's go over those small group questions. And those questions are this. What is the best surprise that you have ever experienced? Number two, what is strange about a Roman officer having this kind of faith that it surprised or impressed Jesus? What is strange about it? Number three, Jesus used a variety of ways to heal people. In this situation, he reminds us of the creation account in Genesis <clears throat> when by simply speaking the man is healed and from a distance you know hashtag social distancing no I'm just kidding just kidding the man was healed from a distance explain whether or not you have this kind of faith that Jesus can be that Jesus can heal the same way today question four if you gave a one-question survey to your classmates and neighbors your age and simply asked them what they know or have heard about Jesus, how do you think they would answer? And question five. How can you leverage social media to help make sure people are finding out accurate and true information about Jesus and how can you do so do so cleverly how can you do so cleverly guys I want to thank you so much for doing this next series with us I'm so excited to meet back up with you guys um, leaders if you're watching this we have a leaders training on August the 1st August the 1st at five o'clock and we'll go till seven o'clock uh, we will serve dinner um, I sent out an invitation yesterday um, on Facebook. If you didn't get it, let me know, or I'll send out a group chat as well today. Um, so let me know if you're going to be able to make it to that. Uh, students, again, remember we are starting back on August the 19th, which is a Wednesday night at six o'clock, and we will start uh, a new series that week. This series that we're in right now, Not So Famous, will be finished by that time. Um, and as of right now, there is something happening in October that we may be able to go to. Remember, we went to Dare to Share last year. We may get to go to that event again. Um, so I'm going to be talking with David Gilmer, hopefully, here in the next couple of days to try and figure out that as well. Um, other than that, those are all the announcements that I have for you today, guys. Um, let's pray real quick, and then I'll dismiss you guys. Father, we thank you and praise you. I ask God that you would be in the midst of everything, that we would learn to trust you and have faith in you, that you will say and do exactly as you've said in the, in the text, Father. That you can heal from a distance, Father. You can heal just by speaking out that you are healed. Father, we know that you are all-powerful, and we ask God that you would continue to use us on a daily basis that we would follow you and trust you and that we may not be the one that goes to a mega church and preaches to 3,000 people. We may just get to minister to the few people we know. But God, I ask that you would use us in a mighty way, that we would follow you and that our trust would be completely and totally devoted to you. We thank you, Father, when we praise you. We ask God that you would continue daily to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So that was it for our first week of Not So Famous. Join us next week as we continue on in this series. Um, and let's dismiss. I am blessed of God. I am called to bless others. I am who God says I am. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love you guys and I'll see you guys next week.